seven things you should do to improve your style. As busy, intelligent women, it feels liberating when we learn new ways to simplify our lives, while still having a clear sense of our personal style. Over the years, I've learned from innumerable deep thinker women that above all, they wanted to feel like themselves. The process involves a lot of searching try or nearer, and even a little bit of luck. Because time is precious, euros are costly and frustrating, and luck is unpredictable. I set out to share with you a few tips that I learned and implemented in my own life that will hopefully help you buy less, more focused, and ultimately feel like yourself. Hi, I'm Silvana, welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about helping you find your personal style and being empowered by it. Feeling good in how we dress has a much broader meaning than just the clothes we wear. It's an attitude towards life at large. So the first tip is wearing more classics. I know I've said that a lot, but whenever I hear a client saying I have nothing to wear or I look in the mirror and I feel off, it's generally because their wardrobe lacks a solid foundation. In other words, classics. Classics function as a mean to ground and lend familiarity to new experimental pieces we've added to our closet. When it comes to dressing well, striking the perfect balance between those experimental pieces and classics is an art to master. When we own too many of the former, our closets lack a vital balance. The perfect wardrobe is an equation of a strong solid foundation plus a statement pieces and a good dose of your personality. but we only feel great when we recognize ourselves in the mirror. Overarching everything is the confidence this piece is back. When you achieve that balance, it gives you that sense of control. If things feel all over the place, which happens, these pieces are somewhat that steadfast, but still give you the ability to be highly creative and expressive. Knowing how to find the perfect ratio between classics and statement items in your closet is entirely personal. That is your style journey. Number two, know your flaws and assets. Every stylish woman I ever met knows their body enough to know where to put emphasis on and where to keep it simple and camouflage. This is something really important to grasp because it's the backbone of the art of getting dressed. One of the keys in style is to learn how to enhance our assets and camouflage our little flaws. We all have both. Look at Miroslava Duma, for example, who is five feet tall. She knows how to make the most of her height by making her legs appear longer, but she's not limited by it. And she knows how to pull off ankle pants and flats because she knows her body. If you don't know how to do that, no matter how wonderful that dress looks in the mannequin, it will never make you feel good. Stylish women make it seem easy but actually they've mastered that right from the beginning. If you have amazing legs, go ahead and wear that mini skirt. If you have a beautiful smile, smile more often. If you don't like a particular part of your body, deviate the attention from that area to the areas that you love. So in this picture, she's enhancing her features and camouflaging her little flaws by balancing out the breast area with the V-neck line and the structured shoulders and highlighting her assets in this case her waistline, while drawing the attention downwards with the red shoes. That's what I mean by deviating the attention to the areas you want to. And let's not forget the smile. It's not to say you should improve things, do whatever you can to get more fit or whatever that might be. But in the meantime, make the most of what you have. Without this attitude, you always look to others for inspiration and will always second guess yourself when getting dressed. If you haven't already learned how to dress for your body type, I have made a few videos on that. You can check those out, but there are also innumerable videos out there. Get rid of the mirror.
One of the most liberating things you can do is to get rid of the mirror. As symbolic or literal that means to you. We judge our images too much on how we should look like at a certain age or how our body is supposed to look like. When we start focusing more on how we feel, we feel better about ourselves. And that takes me to the next tip. Stop buying high-end skincare. Having worked in the fashion industry for so many years, obviously, beauty was and still is an integral part of my life. And one of my jobs back then was to test high-end skincare brands. And that didn't allow me to stick to a tailor-made routine. Besides the fact that these products don't actually do anything for us. Today I only wear active ingredients that are specific for my skin needs. I made a video on my current skincare routine if you're interested. I'll leave the link in the description box below. It's a very simple yet effective routine that has made a big difference for me. It's also very affordable because you don't need to spend a lot of money. When our skin is healthy, hydrated and supple, we look younger. And of course it depends on your overall health, condition and genetics and lifestyle. But skin care is arguably an enhancer and can really make a difference. When we have a good skin, we don't need as much makeup. So having a tailor-made skincare routine for you and wearing deliberately sunscreen is probably all we need on a daily basis. I started wearing less and less makeup and more sun protection only a few years ago and never looked back. As a creature of the 80s and 90s, I didn't wear sunscreen at all growing up. But I think it's never too late and that's the best thing. If you are in your 20s, don't skip the sunscreen whatsoever. So the next tip is going back to style and be aware of sales trap. We are overstimulated with sales alerts and being constantly in stores. And sometimes if you're tempting to buy something just because it was on sale or because we found the piece cute or saw somebody wearing it and looked great on her, that kind of thing. But then you realize that wasn't you after all. So the next time you go shopping, in general, not just on sale, have in mind the items that will embody the core adjectives that describe your personal style. I've made a video on that in depth as well, you can check it out. But think of the items as versatile items that you take on and complement the persona of whatever you pair them with. Also consider if you'll be able to wear them for the most of the year, not just summer or winter. And that will bring the price per wear almost to nothing. Consider also if these pieces allow you to wear them on the most important aspects of your life, like work, going out, and weekends. When you feel tempted to buy something new, think about these things. Get out of the store or get offline and take a break. That allows you to get a space and think if you really love the item, if you really need it. It's a habit I totally recommend you to do, especially if the item is on sale. Because it really doesn't matter that you're saving money. If you won't wear it, it's money that will never get back to your pocket and something that will be cluttering your closet for no reason. But if you really love the piece, then go ahead and buy it. So that leads me to the next tip. Express your creativity. When I hear women saying I have nothing to wear, and look at the wardrobe, I actually see that they already have a decent wardrobe. So it's not a question of not having enough as much as not making the most of what they already have. And that takes creativity. So take one afternoon on your own or with friends to exercise and exchange your creativity and style your existing pieces differently. We normally wear our clothes the same way all the time. So grab a piece you haven't worn in a while and ask your friend how she would style that piece. That is exchanging creativity. And including accessories, of course. That's also a great opportunity for you to weed out the pieces that you don't love and discover a newfound love for the pieces that you forgot you have just because it was hidden in the middle of the clutter. So do that on a regular basis just to keep your creative juices flowing. The next and the last tip encompasses and summarizes everything that I'm trying to convey here, which is bringing the awareness within. Only then can you make informed decisions about the way you buy, and that's the whole purpose of it. Not wasting money and precious time trying to figure out how to style something that's odd-shaped, 
So just learn some of the rules and then when you master them, break them and make your outfit your own. And never forget to bring your signature style to the equation. That's the definition of a trendsetter. Someone who inspires others. You are original and unique. Learn what works for you and be the trendsetter yourself. So that was it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, thank you so much for your support and thanks for watching until the end. Leave your comment in this section below. I love interacting with you. Have a great day, a great week, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye.